Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Great to have you with us. 888-900-3393. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, just a ton just a ton of things to tell you about, as always. Jam-packed show. Um, we've got this library butt monkey in London to tell you about. <clears throat> I don't know why the libraries are so hell-bent on um, corrupting our children or at least filling them with, I don't know, things that are just so inappropriate. And it seems to be pretty much everywhere. It's not just in New York or Chicago. It's it's in London. It's all, it's all over the place. That's because they know they have access to your kids there. Under the guise of doing good, mm-hmm. they can actually fly under the radar. Quite and a bit. they seem to be working with the, you know, uh, certainly the drag queen groups. Uh, they're <clears throat> the drag queens are definitely in, and I think most of the LGBTQIA2+ uh, groups are involved in this. Uh, so we'll get into that. Also, Americans apparently don't want anti-American Olympic protests going on. Huh. Mm. Who knew? Most racial minorities and even Democrats would not support U.S. athletes participating in anti-American protests during the Tokyo Games. Mm. Uh, That's after hammer thrower Gwen Berry protested the national anthem following her third place finish at the Olympic trials last month. A new poll says that 79% of the people who responded, 79% uh, don't want to see protests like that at the Olympics, including 61% of blacks, 69% of Hispanics. Wow. The opposition to Olympic protests was a bipartisan opinion as well. Uh, 72% of Democrats don't like it. Mm. 93% of Republicans. Uh, Who are the 7% of Republicans saying, "Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. That's weird. I don't know. I I like it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't get that. Uh I don't get that. Yeah, and then I think uh, 99% of the people surveyed were like, the heck's a hammer throw? Yes. I think it was 99.9% mm-hmm. of people who didn't have any idea what a hammer throw was. Uh, the only demographic that supported protesting the U.S. Oh, here, this ought to be good. Younger Americans. Oh, yeah. And we're in trouble. Where only 49%, 18 to 24, said it's important to respect the country in Tokyo. 39% disagreed. Even that was a plurality. Hmm. Wow. 49, 39 uh, in favor of not Huh. Huh. Still, uh, the youth in this country, jeez, have they been brought up to despise this country? Yeah, I mean. It is really something else. Seeds have been planted and. Yeah, they have. The crops are in. Yep. At the Olympic trials in June, Barry, of course, turned away from the American flag, put a shirt over her head that read, activist athlete, while the national anthem played. Uh, She had just received her bronze medal. For hammer throwing before the Star Spangled Banner began playing, said she felt the timing of the anthem was on purpose. I felt like it was a setup, and they did it on purpose. I was pissed, to be honest. Yep, it's all about you. Yeah, yeah. Because when have we ever played the national anthem at a sporting event? <laughs> That's before? a new thing. That's <laughs> a new did thing. That just, they did that to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it used to just be nothing but silence. Yeah. Yeah, just to spite her, they thought, hey, what could we do to really get under the skin of Gwen Berry? I know. Let's play the let's play the national anthem. Oh, good idea. <laughs> She's gonna She'll hate, hate that. It. She will hate that. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be great. And so that's how that went down. <laughs> of course. <laughs> She's so stupid. You excited the Olympics are coming? I am. I like yeah. the Olympics. Yeah, me too. I actually do. And you do too? Yeah. Uh, I do it's too. Stu that doesn't like them, right? No. I mean, or doesn't care that much about him. I don't Stu know. Stu fell on like his him. head when he was a kid. I know it's so. weird. 
uh, who wouldn't want to see their country perform uh, and do well and win medals and uh, defeat the rest of the world? I mean, think about it. I mean, that's like the one socially acceptable area where you can rub a communist face in it. Yes. And everybody's like, oh, that's cool. And we're all on board. Hey, America's doing well. That's the one place where everybody seems to be of one mind. Hey, let's go win this thing. You know, and and as we get ready for the Olympics, the U.S. Olympic basketball team. Yeah. With the best basketball players. Yes. In the world. In the world, Pat. This is going to be awesome. What? They lost their last two games. They lost again? To Nigeria. Oh, no. And then Australia, mate. Ugh, just. I can't take it. 91-83. They, they lost. Oh, yeah. That's ugly. That's not a good sign. No, it's not. That's... I mean, LeBron James is not on this team, right? Correct. But Kevin Durant is... Is he okay? Uh, you know... Steph whole... Curry's not, right? No, Curry's not. So Curry and LeBron are the two big ones that are out. But there's a lot of stars. I mean, it's packed with a team that should freaking win the gold. Yeah, right, just Come by on. showing up. Just showing up. In fact, sh- that used to be the case. Yes. You know? Yes. Like, like somebody pointed out on Twitter in 2008, Team USA would go to a Wendy's and a gas station and then win the next game by 50. That was not an exaggeration. Watch we actually this. have the video. We actually have the video. <laughs> <laughs> hey. What is that right there? That's a phone? No, that's the video camera. <laughs> Yeah, what a T-I. You know what it is? See, see Boss, too. We up here at the gas station slash Wendy's slash Starbucks. Gas station slash Wendy's. You get a burger, get you some gas, and get you some coffee. Just stay on the road for another five hours in this joint. Yep. Slam jams. I ain't never in my life had a And a quarter pins oil. And a quarter pins oil. And a quarter, which is right there behind him on the shelf. And a quarter pins oil. So these are, I mean, they are... That's some serious training going on there. <laughs> serious training. Burgers and fries it's and then so crushing the great. world by 50. That's that's what the U.S. is about. That's America. That's America. Oh. Uh, ah, man. What was that, summer of 2008? Ah, oh, there was still time to turn back, y'all. I mean, can you imagine the Michael Jordan, Larry Bird team losing to anybody by any amount of points? No, it couldn't. It, nobody came within... I think the closest any team ever came to him was 30 points. I mean, it was... They destroyed the rest of the world. Destroyed them. Yep. Yeah, you used to think, uh, oh my gosh, they were within, like you said, 30 points. Yeah. That, that, that That's a victory in of itself right there for, for whatever country yeah. got that close. Yes. <sighs> and I guarantee Nigeria never came that close. Jeez. Again, we beat Nigeria the last time we played them. Wasn't it? Wasn't or the time before? Yeah. Either last time or a couple times ago by eighty three points. I was say, that was the number I had in my head. Eighty three and twenty seven, I think, or something, or eighty three uh, and forty uh, something. And then we lose to them. How is that possible? Yeah, I think it was one hundred twenty seven <clears throat> points difference in the last two games. I will say one of the uh, players from from BYU's basketball team uh, tried out for the Nigerian team because he's from there. Mm. Uh, didn't make it. So I mean they. You know they got some talent. Wow, they got some talent, and they have some NBA talent. They've they've actually got, I don't know, five or six players from the NBA that are you know decent, but they're not superstars in the NBA. I I don't know. I just <laughs> I I don't know. That's gonna be that's gonna be ugly. Yeah, I mean if they don't get their crap together, that's gonna be ugly because <clears throat> it's just unacceptable to lose the gold in the Olympics. <clears throat> You know, it's like the Soviets used to be with with hockey. They never lost it. Uh, you could always count on them to win it. Hmm. Canada in the curling competition. Uh, okay, first of all, you know, yeah, uh, the the mm-hmm. men uh, mm-hmm. from America are oh, that's the reigning right. curling time? champs. I love that. And I would also like to draw your attention to 1980. Yes. Do See, you believe in miracles, Pat? Do you believe in miracles? Yes. Uh, 1960. And 1980, we took the gold, both those years. But other than that, <clears throat> it was always Canada and Soviet Union. But, you know, we own basketball. We own it. It's our game. Mm-hmm. We invented it. We play better than anybody in the world. And then to lose uh, in the lead-up to the Olympics, it's embarrassing. Yep. Please stop it. Maybe they're just... Please. please. They're roping them in, Pat. <clears throat> That's the rope-a-dope thing? Yes. They're like, see, we're not so good. 
and then when it, I got nothing. Yeah, they don't really need to yeah, do that, yeah, but yeah. Um, but nice try. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a nice try. Thank you. <sighs> All right. Uh, the NIH, the National Institute of Health, they uh, maintain a library, an online library, of medical information known as the National Center for Biotechnology Information. I love it. I read it. Do you get there a lot? A lot. I go all the time. Every yeah. day I'm probably on the you know, the Center for Biotechnology Information you thing. You probably keep your library card on your keychain. You have to yeah. use it so much. <clears throat> right. Exactly. And in it, you find scholarly articles. Of course, you, I don't have to tell you this. No, no. R- research papers. Yep. yep. <laughs> Love the research papers. In fact, you can find me in the microfiche section oh, of, yeah. of the NIH uh, the library. Microfiche. Wow. Just because, You're just, going old school. Yeah, I'm nostalgic. Oh, nice. For 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 mm. really difficult research <laughs> stuff. Yeah, you like to thread that microfiche into. You the, remember that then, stuff? And then turn the thing, the crank it. Well, we had the glass. Oh, yeah, you had yeah, the yeah. glass, and you'd slide the thing, and you'd be looking at the. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. There yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that's how I, that's it, how I roll. That's how you roll mm-hmm. now. Okay. Um, then they of course have results of medical studies for most common areas of medicine. Lately, however, the repository has been adding a number of new studies that seem to be a little controversial, to say the least. And they deal with medical issues involving transgender children. Oh, jeez. And what's come to be known as, quote, gender-affirming medical care, unquote. A couple of these studies are now drawing public attention because of the decidedly unscientific, potentially dangerous approach they take toward dealing with families who have minor children dealing with gender dysphoria. Wow, how dare you call it that? <laughs> who wrote this article? Right. Oh, my gosh. You called it gender dysphoria? Oh, boy. Bastards. Mm-mm. One of these reports is titled LGBT Testimony and the Limits of Trust, and it's kind of an eye-opener. Written by someone named Maura Priest, the report explores the ethics of ongoing puberty suppression in transgender patients. Uh, there are doctors who uh, use puberty suppressing drugs on children to prevent the natural onset of puberty until they can decide what gender they are, if any. You know, because they might just turn out and you know what? I'm no gender. I'm just, I'm neutral. I'm an, I'm neutered. <laughs> what? Like you know, you have your dog spayed and neutered. Uh-huh. I've been neutered. So are you like a eunuch mm. now? Sort of. I'm just like a. I'm like a Ken doll. I, you know, I'm smooth like a Ken doll. I don't have any sort of mm. genitalia whatsoever. <laughs> so I don't know how it works. I'm just, no, because Ken doesn't have anything. Yeah, there. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm listening. I'm Looks learning. like a boy, but he's really, yeah. he's really gender neutral. Have we asked Ken how he identifies? I, I have not. So I don't see, know if we don't know. Has. But the author goes one step further, insisting that it's no longer up to the doctor to make decisions for children in such matters, and. Parents who object to this form of treatment should lose their veto power over such decisions. So, Mm-mm. this research says that parents of children who are struggling with transgenderism uh, should have no say in whether or not their their child is uh, has their puberty suppressed. Mm. Are you kidding me? We're in a dark place, America. Oh, I I don't understand it. I really don't. And we got here so quickly. How did that happen? If the medical community is to take this seriously, it says, as they should, then it's no longer the job of physicians to do their own weighing of the costs and benefits of transition-related care. Assuming the patient is informed and competent, then only the patient can make this assessment. Because only the patient has access to the true weight of transition-related benefits. Moreover, taking LGBT patient testimony seriously also means that parents should lose veto power over most transition-related uh, pediatric care. That is incredible. That is absolutely astounding. So, you have a... I mean, if you're trying to suppress uh, puberty, then you're talking about 11- and 12-year-olds, right? Maybe 13 yeah, you're talking about child abuse is what you're talking about. And very young kids. And you're telling me that they're competent and informed enough to make that decision at 12 or 13 years old as to whether or not they're going to have their puberty suppressed? No, thank you. That is 
insane. We don't let them make any important life decisions. You're going to let them make the decision about whether or not they want to change genders? Yeah, but they can't decide if they want to wear a helmet or not when they go on a bike ride. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's So you better put that helmet on. It's the law. Oh, but you want to change your gender? <sighs> Good gosh. All right. But, but are you going to wear a helmet when you go down to the gender-changing store? You bet you are. You don't have yeah. any choice. I'm not even asking. I'm telling you. Uh-huh. But, yeah, if you want to you wanna suppress your, your puberty... That's cool. That's fine. That's cool. I mean, they don't, they don't even know. That can bring on serious and life-changing problems. And that's uh, just, I mean, for the rest of your and life. And that's just the physical aspect you're talking about. Never mind yes, the, the, that, the mental... That's right. Oh, my goodness. That's why the suicide rate with transgender children, are, it's so high. Um, it's astronomical. And it's astronomical, even if you decide to make the switch. In fact, I, I think it's higher after they make the switch. Boy, I wouldn't be surprised. <sighs> this article was published on a government website, supposedly created to disseminate information on medical science. And this is what we get from it. They're following the science. Don't forget that. They're always following the science. <laughs> and the author fully supports the use of puberty blocking drugs like Lupron. Uh, this support is offered despite the fact, again, that the FDA has never approved the use of these gonadotropin releasing hormones, uh, hormone drugs, in any cases except for children diagnosed with early onset puberty, known as precocious puberty. And I think that happens at like nine years old and you're like, whoa, whoa, okay, this is going too fast. So that's what these drugs are meant for. Uh, these have serious, can have serious effects on long-term health and have never been proved approved for use in treating gender dysphoria in any fashion, yet they're recommending them for your children without parental permission. Wow. Plus, the woman who wrote this is study, Maura Priest, she's not even a medical doctor. <laughs> she's a professor of philosophy and bioethics at Arizona State. <laughs> uh, all right. But she's a doctor, right? Because, I mean, that's all that matters. Right. Yeah, but not a, she, she is a doctor, but she's got a PhD. She's not a medical right. doctor. <clears throat> I, th I think that's astounding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's like uh, <clears throat> Joe Biden. Right? Yes. Yeah. Or Glenn Beck. No, or Glenn, Dr. Glenn Beck. Dr. Glenn Beck is a doctor. So, and he's just a general doctor of humanities. So mm -hmm. he knows everything about humanness. Yeah. He covers pretty much all of it. How about that pepper guy? <laughs> oh. He's uh, a doctor, right? Yeah. Yeah. The one that... Uh, Joe Biden had some fun with, right? Mm -hmm. And thank you, uh, Dr. Pepper. All right. And that was a long time ago, too. The Dr. Pepper quote. That was when he that still allegedly ago. had his faculties. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> and uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Pepper and Mr. Pibb out there. I see you, too. Oh, wow. Mi Mr. Mr. Pibb's Pibb. out there. Yeah. He, he doesn't Welcome. make a lot of public appearances. No, no. So it's good to have Mr. Pibb here. Yeah. Uh, and Dr. Pepper over there. That's good. Uh, Dr. Schultz, I noticed, was uh, sitting oh. up front with his shoes off. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, golly. That's a bunch of... <laughs> celebs in attendance that you just don't see usually. <laughs> you know, you don't expect that. Right. So it's a it's a good day when they're all together. That's cool. Let me tell you about uh, keeps. If you'd like to keep your hair, and who wouldn't? Well, you didn't really care, did you, Keith? <laughs> did you care? Was it a big deal? Eh. As you started to lose your hair? Nah, I don't know. It, I come, I, it doesn't I, seem it, like you're that bothered yeah, by it. No, nah, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's in the back. It's annoying. Yeah. It's the front that I'm just like, eh, whatever. But mm -hmm. I, I just I just shave it off. For me. <laughs> and get to that point. I don't want to lose my, mm -hmm. and uh, many people don't. So if you're <clears throat> concerned about it, there is something you can do about it. And that's keeps hair loss products. Um, you know, when it's the first thing you see in the, in the mirror and it's starting to bother you and you got the receding line or bald spots, ah, uh, Take care of it at Keeps. Go to keeps.com slash Pat. They've got 
more five-star reviews than any other competitors, and hundreds of thousands of guys trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. Keeps offers doctor-recommended, FDA-approved hair treatment. And because they carry the generic versions of these drugs, uh, you pay about half the price. Best of all, you do everything online. Just answer a few questions online. Take a couple pictures and post those, and then a licensed doctor will review all that information and come up with the right hair loss treatment for you. Then ship it directly to your door. And if you have any questions at all along the way, you can message your Keeps doctor 24-7 and track your progress with Keeps Progress Tracking Tool. So, to get, we'll get you started with a special discount right now. Go to keeps.com, keeps.com slash pat. Get 50% off your first order of hair loss treatments. That's keeps.com slash pat. Pat Gray, Unleashed. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Let's go to uh, Robert in Kentucky. Hey, Robert, you're on the blaze. Hey, Pat. A um, couple of things. One, you are so lucky it's Tuesday because if Jeffy had been here today, hearing you talk about being smooth down there, that would have been the next Tuesday <laughs> Pat episode. Um, secondly, um, I don't like the name Kexi Cookies. I wish they'd go back to Scrumptious Cookies. It's just such a better name. Oh, okay. But uh, the reason that Done. I actually called is, um, <laughs> yeah, you'll get right on that. Done. Um, the reason I actually called is I think that the way that we handle this um, situation with kids transitioning is mm-hmm. if the parents don't have any authority, then they don't have any responsibility. And I, I was sitting here at my desk I'm, I'm at work, and I was listening to you talk about it, and I'm just like, you know what, I almost went full-on Steve Dace that, you know what, if you're going to make that decision, you're going to be responsible for it, you're going to live with it, and mm. I'm not taking any responsibility for it. It's not my authority. I don't have any authority. You can't put responsibility on me if you're taking my authority away. Yeah. So, and, and I think it's more, I would direct it more towards my own kids than I would towards the government, because the government doesn't give a crap. No, but they don't. The, it'll scare the crap out of the kids enough, hopefully, that they'll be like, oh, well, maybe I should rethink this. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Robert. Um, yeah, it's it, it's amazing. It it is absolutely amazing. And the government involvement. And we just have a story that the military has decided they're going to pay for people's transition surgeries. Uh, the army. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> it's incredible. Mm-hmm. Just incredible. And and before we get too far <clears> away from <throat> it, you had mentioned I bet the rates of suicide are higher after you've made the change. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's see here. Uh, 2011 Dutch study found that male to female transsexuals. So is that male after? to female. Male to female. Okay. Mm-hmm. Higher uh, suicide risk, 5.7 times higher in the general population. 5.7 so, times. So that's after, right? I, honestly, I have no idea. Transsexual. Uh, yeah, trans, trans women. Yeah, so you've mm-hmm. made the switch there. Yeah. And you're now nearly six times higher in the general population to commit suicide. Jeez. So it's apparently not helping. Mm-mm. It's not helping anything. Uh, I think, you know, we might want to rethink this and, and help them out in in different ways. Uh, what do I know? Nothing. I, I, in fact, I named my cookie company wrongly. So what do I know? I don't know nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, the scrumptious thing, we had to change it. Yeah. Because uh, there was a copyright infringement. Um, initially, our lawyer said, yeah, nope, no problem. Go ahead. Mm. And then a year into it. Oh, by the way, there's a company that uh, is going to sue you if you uh, if you use uh, scrumptious. <laughs> okay, all right, well, good. Thank Boy. you. Appreciate that. Boy, he earned his. Uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't he though? His, his uh, yeah, it was good. Retainer, right? Worked out really well oh, for oh. us, and thus uh, the name change. And so we went with something that you know, the, my son, my middle son, is the president mm-hmm. of the company, and so he went on a mission to Finland, and uh, meant something to him to have it. You know, Finnish name. Kexi means cookie. Yeah, I like that. In Finnish. That works out nicely. Yeah. But it, but honestly, it does sound like your attorney was... Um, a douchebag? A dumbass? <laughs> a buffoon? I was going to make a reference <laughs> to Arrested Development, which I hope oh. is a show that you'll watch. Uh, Henry Winkler is a, is a really bad attorney in that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so when you do finally get around to watching that show, you'll go, oh, there's our attorney. I will get around to that, yeah. too, because I've, I've always heard good things about it. Yeah. 
Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. By the way, so if you want a great cookie, mm-hmm. uh, n- a scrumptious name or not, Kexi dot com is where you should go. We've got these new butter beer Uh-oh. uh cookies. I you got to try them. They are delicious. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, I'm a big fan Incredible. of butter beer. <clears throat> you know, me down, like too. Harry Potter yes. world in Orlando and yes, carrying the kids. Make were it you sometimes? surprised how good that stuff was? Yeah. When yeah. I when we first went to Harry Potter world mm-hmm. and tried the butter beer drink, I was like. Whoa! I didn't want to leave Where that restaurant. You know, I know. Like, look, yeah, you guys go do rides. I'm gonna stay here and drink butter beer all day. <laughs> you could <laughs> drink it all day. Yeah. So you got a cookie that tastes like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. So you should go and get it you at kxc.com. That's what you should. While do. you're listening to all the podcasts, uh, catch up with the library at, at the Mike Show. Dot com. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're uh, selling. Who's coming up? Didn't you get somebody good at? Uh, oh, I've always got somebody good. Pat. But I mean, you got a, a somebody upcoming that you nailed it uh, in a nice oh. way at uh, CPAC. Uh, I think we're gonna get uh, somebody. I don't want to say it. Oh, okay. Jinx it. You, you know? don't want to say anything. Yeah, I don't have it scheduled right. yet. But uh, yeah, this week we talked to a pastor who makes barbecue, and that's and he came to this studio and didn't bring barbecue, Pat. I. I boot him out of the building. Yeah, get like, out. Yeah, you're talking about God get stuff. Out. I got it. Where's the barbecue, bro? Whatever. Get out. Mm-hmm. Until you come back with a delicious barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Here's a great meme, speaking of all this. Um, a perfect meme about vaccines sent to us by Jules. <laughs> I, I love this. I am a trans vaccite. Uh-huh. I identify as vaccinated. Yes. Well, then done. That should be it, right? See, we have a word now for it. The objective reality of what's in my body doesn't matter, just like my chromosomes. <laughs> I mean, we're done. I, I love that. I love that. Trans vaccite. Yep. If it's good enough for the goose, that's what it's I am. good enough for the gander. I'm a trans vaxite. Trans vaxite. Mm-hmm. Don't I, judge me. I do identify as vaccinated. Are you vaccinated? Yes. I identify as vaccinated. And how insulting of you to so ask. great. <laughs> how do they get around that? Oh, they do because now oh, they suck. Uh, yes, exactly. Because the rules only apply mm-hmm. to us. There you go. Not to them. Mm-hmm. That's why. By the way, the FDA just added another warning oh to boy. the Johnson & Johnson. They are this crippling is... this Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Yeah, this is scary, man. For possible link to a rare neurological disorder. Yay! Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, Guillain-Barre I, syndrome, which is kind of a nasty... I know somebody that suffers from this. Oh, you do? Yeah. No, I didn't get it from the vaccine. <clears throat> okay. Um, but uh, trouble walking, oh, constant shit. pain... Really? Yeah, yeah, it's not good, man. And, this and is, is it is it like a lifetime thing or? Yeah, it's gonna be a lifetime. He's and it gets yeah, not good. So they've they've noticed a hundred cases now. There have been twelve million um, shots of Johnson and Johnson, and a hundred of people got this. But I why mean, risk it? Why? I don't want any chance of getting this stuff. And it mostly affects uh, men who are. Over the age of 50. But we don't know anybody in this room that's a dude over the age of 50 that's considering getting the vaccine. Are, do we? Do no. Anybody? I don't oh. think so. No. Okay. Oh, that's plumbing it. Wait, <laughs> wait what? <laughs> oh, wait. oh, oh it. no. Now you've gone too far. Well, you're eight years old. We recently established. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. 95 of those 100 cases were serious enough to require hospitalization. One person died. Oh, my gosh. Already? Uh, it damages nerve cells and can cause muscle weakness. In rare cases, it can cause paralysis. Mm. The cases which are now under investigation by the FDA and the Centers for Disease Control have largely been reported about two weeks after vaccination and in, and mostly males. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, 50 and older usually. Yikes. Johnson & Johnson said in a statement the company had been in contact with the FDA and other regulators. Oh, good, they're on it. Oh, they're on it. The government's on it. Don't worry about it. They'll fix it. They'll give you your life back. Everything will be fine. That other person that died is going to come back to life. Government's on the case. Go ahead and get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'd say get Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer. Just to kind of yeah. be safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And throw in Moderna, too. What the heck? You just want to be super, super vaccinated. <laughs> trans right. Pat Gray. Got some tweets here. Uh, DMX DM tweets. As long as T 
Team USA Basketball gets a gold medal in social justice, mm-hmm. we're all winners, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, right, right. Uh, Vladimir Putin <laughs> tweets, are we just dismissing the possibility these players are losing on purpose to make the U.S. look bad as a form of protest? Now, that uh, would be a theory I would support if LeBron were on the team. Yeah. Kevin Davis tweets, I'll watch the Olympics when they have our version of football as an event. Oh, we dominate that. Oh, man. I would hope so. (laughs) Since literally two countries on Earth play it, and they're right next to each other. Uh, Tyler Bell tweets, I now identify as 501c3. I ask that... (laughs) I ask that all retail organizations respect my new life choice and yes. remove the sales tax. Yes. All right. Oh, I identify as a 501c3. I love it. I love it. Uh, Mr. Co- Mr. McCoffee tweets, if I took my child to an R-rated movie, people look at me as if I was a horrible parent. If I took my kid to transgender reassignment surgery, I'm praised and considered a great parent. It's yeah. so true. What a world, man. It's so true. Uh, all right. Ron in Virginia. You're on the blaze. Hi. Good morning, Pat. Good morning. Doing great. Thanks for asking. Thanks. Hey, Good. saw your little clip yesterday uh, about the little boy <clears throat> picking up the American flag and destroying somebody else's property. Yeah. I mean, the, the borders are free. If you're not happy here, <laughs> you yeah. can leave. Exactly. And try, try and do this crap somewhere over in China. Or mm-hmm. Japan. Mm-hmm. You'll never get away with it. It's so disgusting. It really is. So over it. Uh, me too. Thanks a lot, Ron. That That is my sentiment every time. If you dislike this country so much, nobody is keeping you here. You don't have to live here. Why, if you think we're such a bad nation, why would you continue to pay taxes to it to keep it going, to keep it thriving? I mean... That's reprehensible if that's what you're doing. You should really, on principle, get out! Uh, We've got this Black Lives Matter Utah chapter. Speaking of the American flag, in a. Now, this happened on the 4th of July. Right. Uh, Utah's Black Lives Matter chapter declared the American flag a symbol of hatred. (laughs) Where are you getting that? When we black Americans see this flag, we know the person flying it is not safe to be around. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. Jeez. Oh, okay. When we see this flag, we know the person flying it is a racist. Wow. All right. <clears throat> when we see this flag, we know that the person flying it lives in a different America than we do. Well, that's true. If you're this hateful and this stupid and this ignorant. Judge much? My gosh. Man. When we see this flag, we question your intelligence. Okay. We know to avoid you. It's a symbol of hatred. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you should avoid everybody because you're not fit to live in this society. (laughs) That's just pathetic. Here's another example of get out. Yeah, yeah. I thought you would uh, particularly appreciate uh, the head of the Utah chapter for Yeah, take a look at her. Uh, This is great. (laughs) Whoa! Perfect. Talk about a symbol (laughs) of hate. Yeah! (laughs) Yeah! Look at that! A University of Utah cap? Uh Uh-huh. Get out of here. What do we say about... The cap of the godless animals? Are you kidding me? And you dare talk about the U.S. flag? Right. 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 Thank you, Keith. Come on. Come on, lady. Come on. Right? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I felt I had to <clears throat> wash out the, mm. the, the TV monitor there. And Good to see your Cougar rep- Nation pride coming through, Represent the BYU. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter founder Lex Scott confirmed to Fox News that her group, had made the post to highlight how hate groups can allegedly co-opt the American flag without prompting similar blowback. They suck. So remember, mm. you fly the flag, the American flag. Mm-hmm. Then that says you're a racist hater who hates and is racist. Okay. Speaking of questioning people's intelligence, which they say they do when they see the American flag, uh, that's what I do when I see this kind of slop coming out of people this kind of filth mm-hmm. it's just so stupid 
it's just so ignorant. Yeah, the, save, save your <clears throat> let's come together, let's find commonalities, let's unite stuff. Because clearly, yeah. you are trying to separate us on the American flag. Yep. Stop. As Glenn has continually said the last few years, if we can't, if we can't agree just on those simple pr- principles, like, you know, this is an inherently decent country, and it's done uh, overall by far more good than bad, and... If you can't agree on those principles and the Constitution, right, the Bill, the of, rights, Bill man. of Rights, then, you know, we can't coexist. This ain't the country for you. No. I'm sorry. Yeah. But so, so, you know, you've got this chick hating on the American flag, and the New York Times recently wrote, what, an op-ed or something where they said it's a... A divisive symbol. Oh, my gosh. Are yeah. you serious? I mean, this is taking ink in a newspaper now. Yes. Uh, then Jen Psaki was asked how Joe Biden feels about the U.S. flag flying at international protests. Oh, uh, nice. Like, you know, the Cubans are flying the flag because yeah. they want freedom now. It, the White House is trying to say uh-huh. the Cuban situation is about the rise of COVID numbers no. in their country. No, and remember yesterday when I was like, Come I on. wasn't sure what they were chanting. Uh, I was informed they were chanting liberty. They liberty. weren't chanting free vaccines. <laughs> like, where's my vaccine? Right. Where's my vaccine? I don't guess that's what they We were. want more lockdowns. Yeah. We want more lockdowns. <laughs> Please rule me. Uh, here's Saki being asked about it. Yeah, Tom, I just have two quick ones. So first on Cuba, recently the New York Times described the American flag as alienating the sun, but we've seen um, these Cuban protesters uh, flying the American flag as a symbol for freedom. We saw it in Hong Kong as well. Um, so does the administration support international protesters flying the American flag? And what message do you have to Americans who are wary of flying it here in the U.S.? Well, I would say first, uh, the, the president certainly values and respects uh, the, uh, the uh, symb- symbol uh, of y- the, the American uh, flag. Uh, he's someone who uh, the, certainly uh, the, uh, uh, waves it outside of his uh, house or ha- does in Delaware and, and other places where he's does lived he? uh, throughout his time. <laughs> uh, but he also believes that people have the right to peaceful protest, and he oh. thinks both can be true. Um, both can uh, be true. Let's see. Go ahead. Oh, wow, that was... Uh, no. Okay. That mm. was... No. Not an answer. It's amazing because... You know, people used to feel this way in uh, previous decades, you know, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. But they were shouted down. And then the White House would categorically denounce them and talk about the pride that they have in the flag in this country and what it stands for, what it really represents. And we could all get behind it. Just a tiny little minority of malcontents. We didn't even worry about it, which is why you didn't have to worry about them staying here or going somewhere or whatever. And people rarely said, if you don't like it, get out. Because it wasn't a sentiment that needed to be stated. Well, now it does, because we can't even agree on the the American flag uh, being a symbol of of a great nation. The greatest nation that's ever existed on the face of this earth. There's there's not enough people anymore that believe that. And it's it's chilling that uh, we're in the place we're in. It's hard to believe. Jeez. It's, I, I remember laughing at people like that. Mm-hmm. You just dismiss them because it was such a tiny fraction of this country. Eh, it's not the case anymore. Uh, let me tell you uh, about iTarget Pro. Um, <clears throat> you know, practicing with your firearms can be really enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. But with the cost of ammo going through the roof, well, it's been through the roof, uh, if you're looking for a cost-effective, safe, and simple way to practice, iTarget Pro is where you should go. It was invented to give law-abiding gun owners a better way to train in the saf- safety and privacy of their own home. I love mine. No more inconvenient trips to the range or expensive practice ammunition. Have you tried to buy ammunition lately, uh, Keith? Uh, it's outrageous. Yeah, it's yeah, and it, and you can't find and, it. Right, and that's the problem. It's out of the store as soon as they as soon as they restock, it's gone. Yeah, my father-in-law has a new gun, but he can't find ammo to fit it. Now. That's really something. That wow, sucks. So all you have to do is download iTarget's proprietary app, load the laser bullet into your firearm, and then start training. 
Uh, it's an excellent experience. Because of the laser bullet, makes it safe, obviously. So bullets aren't going through your walls or through people. Uh, and it shows you where on the target your your shot lands. It's just, it's great. Dry fire training, too, will help you develop muscle memory and uh, sharpen your target reaction speed, your sight alignment, trigger function, all that stuff. iTarget Pro comes in all the major calibers, including 223 for your AR-15. So you can you can be sharp with almost any firearm. Go to iTargetPro.com, save 10%, plus get free shipping when you use the offer code pad. Smartest way for you to practice. It's the letter I, then targetpro.com, itargetpro.com, offer code Pat. Pat Gray Unleashed. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, hey, the FBI wants you to snitch <clears throat> on your family and friends. This is really such a great plan. Uh, they've made posts on various social media recommending that, quote, family members and peers, unquote, turn people into the FBI <laughs> if they suspect them of homegrown violent extremism. Here we go. You know, according to the FBI, family members and peers are often best positioned to witness signs of mobilization to violence. Help prevent homegrown violent extremism. And then it tells you where to visit and report suspicious behaviors and report them to the FBI. Jeez. This is like the George W. Bush thing after 9-11 that I hated so much. When it was the spy on your neighbor situation, you see something, say something. Yeah. And he, and they had this uh, sort of mandate to postal workers and... Got to be vigilant, remember? Everybody had to be vigilant. And if you see anything suspicious at all on the houses that you that you visit why please report them to homeland security immediately it was a it was a beautiful spy on each other uh, <laughs> sort of feel to america that was really wonderful and here we are again uh the twitter post also includes a link to a booklet put up by put out by the department of national intelligence the dni telling what warning signs to look for in your friends and loved ones the indicators are ranked Uh, Some of them being highly diagnostic on their own. Others require one or more other indicators to gain diagnosticity. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Very good. Also, the booklet concluded with risk factors to watch out for in others. You know, like, A, the biggest risk factor, are they white? Okay. Okay. Are Hold they on. white? I feel like I should make a checklist because see if this is describing anybody we know. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, are they a white person? Are they white? All right. Check. Okay. Do they own a gun? Do they own a gun? Well, can it be at the bottom of a lake? Technically, yes. Technically, you own it, right? Yes. So Okay, so check. Okay. Mm-hmm. White gun. Uh, have they ever said anything positive <clears throat> about Donald J. Trump? Donald J. Trump positive. Okay. Mm-hmm. Check. So far, um, I can think of a couple people. Me too. That aren't too far removed from Me too. this room. Mm-hmm. That this applies to so far. <laughs> what else you got on your little checklist there? Did they actually vote Did for they, Donald J. Trump? They vote for Trump. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so far mm-hmm. you've got a four for... Do they have an American flag? A U.S. flag. Mm-hmm. Do they have one? Do they own one? Yes, check. If so, yeah. do they ever fly it? Say fly on it. special occasions. Well, such okay. as everything like such as the 4th of July. Okay. I mean, so far, this is... I'm scared right this now. This is, yes. Yeah, I'm six, scared. Six issues here. What, what yeah, else? That was just off the top of my head. Top of your head. What Do they, do they, um, do they express their political opinions freely? Mm-hmm. 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 Are their political opinions typically the opposite of the current administration? Right. Okay. So far, we've got eight warning signs. I believe we have enough to act on. Do they listen to country music? What if they listen to country music? Why then? I, I can stop writing now because there's nobody in this mm. room that I know that these all apply to now. No. <clears throat> oh, no. no. That oh, one wait. certainly doesn't apply to me. No. No, me neither. So, so I guess we're clean. I'm clear. I'm in the clear completely. All right. So now we're, we're not... We're not, um, we're not a problem. Public enemy number one for the government. No. We don't check all the boxes. Have they ever listened to Fox News? 
Okay. So That's a warning sign for sure. Okay. For sure. Fox News. Uh, all right. Okay. And, you know, here's the good thing. Now we have these Biden volunteers, these Biden administration volunteers. And I, I assume some of them are, are paid uh, workers as well that are going door to door. And while they do that, you know, while they're going door to door for the vaccination process, uh, they can also check around your house and see if they can spot any of these suspicious uh, trigger items. And uh, we're gonna find we're gonna find these people. We're gonna find these domestic terrorists, and we're gonna root them out, and we're gonna put them in prison. Um, and <laughs> so I'm very happy about the rules that Biden has set up for his door to door vaccine salesman. <laughs> including ignore all no solicitation signs. I think that's great. Don't it, you don't have to abide by that. That doesn't apply to you at all. You're not selling anything. And as as we established yesterday, in order to be soliciting, you don't have to be selling anything. Um but uh this would be perfect cuz you can you can do both of these in one. You can uh snitch on your family members and on your friends, and we can also find those people, those outliers in our society who maybe don't have any family or friends, but these volunteers uh, with the door-to-door vaccine situation uh, can find them and root them out. Isn't this fun? We're going to be a much healthier nation soon. Yes. Soon. Yes. Uh, This is (laughs) really good. (laughs) And I can't think of a time in history where any of this stuff has been uh, troublesome. Or uh, a warning sign of anything worse to come. Can you think of any? I can't think of anything. Oh, boy. I think it's perfectly fine. I mean, I didn't know it was going to be a pop quiz <laughs> this early in the morning, Pat. Well, you needn't even think about it because there's there's never been a time. Never? No. Never. Not where ever. We, where we've sought out mm-hmm. individuals in a society right. to isolate them from the rest. Ratted out, ratted out our neighbors and our family members. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't think of a time when that's ever happened. Yeah, I'm stumped. Maybe employ uh, youth, the youth in the country, to do that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so don't worry about it. Everything's fine when you're part of a team. Mm-hmm. More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. Pat Gray. Great to have you with us. I uh, got some tweets here. Jimmy Dimples tweets on the non-answer to the protesters flying the U.S. US flag. I thought Biden was supposed to be the incoherent one. <laughs> Saki did sound a tad incoherent there. But um, speaking of that, at uh, one of Biden's recent uh, press conferences, I believe this was maybe not yesterday, but the day before. It was even yesterday. I don't know. Time goes by so fast. Who knows? Uh, no, it wasn't the day before because the day before was Sunday. So, no, it was yesterday. Okay. Uh, where he had uh, this to say. Work for the release of detained Americans, including uh, Mark, uh, uh, f- hey. excuse me, f- f- Ferrix. Uh-huh. I, I want to pronounce the name correctly. I, mis- I misspoke. And this, uh, yeah. starting this month, we're going right. to begin to re, re, reloc- We're going to be, begin relocation right. flights for Afghanistan SIV applicants. Uh, mm. Half have gotten on aircraft and come c- commercial flights and come. And other half believe they want to stay. We went for two reasons: one, to hello, bring Osama bin Laden Jeez. to the gates of hell. As I said at the time. So that keeps happening to him. His brain just uh-huh. locks up right in the middle of a sentence for yeah. two reasons. To bring <laughs> Osama. I mean, I. Seriously. Wow. Good grief. Wow. That's frightening. Very frightening. Yep. There he is. The There he is. The, the leader the, of the free world. Leader of President of the United States of America. How proud are you? Oh, that's Exactly. There it is, yeah. That's right. Bring, uh, bring, bring oh, Osama bin Laden to the gates of. And hell. wasn't he against that? Right? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yes, he was. Because it was the toughest decision, Keith, in the last 500 years. But to me, that's conservative. I think it's 5,000 years. You do? Yeah, I do. I do. What do you. There's you, never been a tougher decision in the. In, Really, in in mankind's history. So you think long about three thousand BC, there was something a little bit there tougher than be. deciding whether or not. Uh, to... But I'm not even willing to huh. guarantee there was. Maybe though. Maybe. Maybe. 
in 3000 BC. I'll see what happened back then that, that you're hedging with. Uh, the Bronze Age came okay. to an end. Yeah. That's probably, mm-hmm. that probably the tough part there. <laughs> Egyptians around 3000 BC decided to uh, make paper from papyrus. So oh, did they? I bet it's when you were, you were trying to hang on to the past. You were like, no, nah, let's chisel all the time. That's right. a tough decision. Right. So I can see where, you know. Hey, this stone tablet mm-hmm. lasts a lot longer. Uh, that a piece of papyrus will. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you that were was a torn. Hard decision. You I'm, were like, yeah. Do mm-hmm. do we keep chiseling or should we kill the the terrorist mastermind? Exactly. Nine eleven. Right. Those are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy who killed three thousand Americans. So, yeah. yeah. That so you one, had to go yeah. back that far. Hard decision. To find a decision. Especially when we made the decision like the first day after nine eleven. Uh, we mourned for a few minutes, and then we're like, okay, let's go get that guy. And uh, that decision had been made long in advance of when Barack Obama came around and finally pulled the trigger on him. Uh, Tobin for Pope Campaign tweets, can you really call yourself fully vaccinated if you haven't at least sampled all the available options? Yeah, you can just just remember <coughs> you're a transvaxite. <coughs> right. Right? You just yes. identify as mm-hmm. being vaxxed. Al Gore's artificial insanity. Here's the hilarious irony. To those people that hate this country and the flag, try your blatant disrespect in one of those socialist communist countries you love so much. See what happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Todd Curtis tweets, if the answer to gun violence is to get rid of guns, what's the answer to road rage? Uh Getting rid of roads? (laughs) I like that. That would save us a lot of money on the infrastructure bill. Uh, there's always a silver lining, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, that, that's why they got hmm. rid of that road that used to go between my house and your house. Right. There's just too much rage going on. Like, ah, we solve this problem. And just that's right. They took it take out. Take it out, yeah. Big oil, fish, and chips. Uh, if it keeps the dumbasses away from my residence because they're scared of it, I'll get the largest American flag I could possibly <laughs> find and proudly fly it. <laughs> Petty Officer America, I'm going to call on the FBI and snitch on everyone. I know who's BLM, Antifa, or just a leftist in general, and report them as dangerous extremists. Mm. Let's see how long this lasts. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm. We could go that direction. Certainly. Mm-hmm. That's an option. Um, also, we have this judge in Ohio. You know, right. here we are talking about whether or not vaccines are mandatory. And geez, the, the longer this thing stretches out, the more mandatory they seem to be. Certainly, uh, in the U.S. military, in the Army, they're starting to mandate them. In all kinds of hospitals and businesses all around the country, they're kind of mandating them. And here's a judge in Ohio making the vaccine part of sentencing this criminal. Common Pleas Court Richard Fry tells me he started using the COVID-19 vaccine as a term of probation in his courtroom last week, but not for everyone. He ordered it three times out of 20 different sentencing hearings. I did talk to one of those three offenders today, and he tells me he feels very strongly about this and feels that this order violates his civil rights. Mm -hmm. One week to the day. Uh, The case was about... um a gun charge and some drugs. Franklin County criminal offender Sylvan Latham tells me he stood before common police court judge Richard Fry. I know Judge Fry's reputation. I know he's known for giving people max time, jail time, all that. I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to have five years probation. Latham thought his attorney struck a deal with prosecutors to three years probation. But during his sentencing hearing, I was stressed out right then. I didn't know what to do. I was kind of, I was very put, very much so put on the spot. Latham said the judge told him he'd give him the five year max unless he got a COVID 19 vaccine. Wow. With the shot, Jeez. Latham said his probation would be cut down considerably to just one year. I'm shaking <laughs> at this point, like I don't really like where this is going. In the moment, Latham agreed. Now his terms of probation state he must get the shot in the next 30 days and provide proof to the probation department. He has your future in his hands. Do you feel that's an overstep? I feel like it is an overstep, especially when he Mm -hmm. asked me, would I get it? And I said, I really don't want to get it. I spoke with Judge Fry by phone. He tells me of the three cases in which he ordered COVID-19 vaccinations, none of the offenders said they had a religious or medical Mm -hmm. objection. 
He said this is him doing his part to inch the community closer. To yeah, that's not immunity. your job. He well, said something about a new Delta crazy. strain out attacking like black people, but I, I haven't huh. had any symptoms. I told him I've been fine. Like uh-huh. I just went to the hospital for strep throat and they didn't try to give me the vaccine. So Latham tells why. me he's not trying to get out of punishment for his crimes, huh. but also doesn't feel injections into his body Thank you. should be part of the time. <laughs> it's yeah. Not, yeah. Like, how do you, that's my health. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's his health. What is a judge doing sticking his nose into this health-related issue? How about you pull out your uh, your pocket constitution there in the courtroom and yeah. read the Eighth Amendment about cruel and unusual punishments Oh my gosh, that is so unusual. That's we- that's bad, man. Where, what? That is not your job to get people vaccinated as a judge. Jeez. So this guy has to decide now. And he's obviously pretty hesitant on the vaccine. He, he obviously doesn't want to get it. And so you're going to force him into it. Well, I'm sorry. He gave up his rights when he committed a felony. Did he give up his rights to his... His body, what he, what he puts into it? Yeah, does the punishment fit the crime here? I don't think so. That, that makes no sense. There is no connection whatsoever Jeez. to his crime. Uh, what was it? A gun charge and a drug charge to, oh, well, now you're getting the vax or we're just going to increase your uh, time served. Okay. Well. Isn't it crazy how obsessed, obsessed the vaccine supporters are with getting people who don't want to be vaccinated to get them vaccinated? If, again, if you've been vaccinated, don't worry about what I'm doing. Because you're protected. Well, the most vulnerable among us. The most vulnerable are protected to the tune of 89% of them have already made that decision and gotten their vaccine. 89%. Ridiculous. It's it's insane. And it's getting worse. Uh, Fauci. Hasn't Fauci, we were just trying to think off the air a few minutes ago, mm-hmm. hasn't he said that he doesn't, he's not in favor of mandates? Shouldn't be mandated, the vaccine. Well, I found where he is skirted around it by saying there should be no federal mandates. Okay. but No federal. Uh, huh. I don't know. I, I feel like there was something a little bit more. He now seems to want mandates <laughs> for yeah. the vaccine. Here he is talking about the Local it. level, Jake, there should be more mandates. Oh. There really should be. We're wow. talking about life and death Dorking. situation. Yeah. So I am in favor of that. You know, one of the things that will happen, and I think mm. the hesitancy at the local level of doing mandates is because the vaccines have not been officially fully approved. But people need to understand <laughs> that the amount of Help data us. right us, now Majesty. that shows a high degree of effectiveness and a high degree of safety is more than we've ever seen with emergency use authorization. These mm. people are sick. <laughs> they are. Yeah. I mean, seriously, they are, uh, yeah. like, you, you picked the perfect word, obsessed. Bro, back off. Yeah. You, oh. It's, it's the opposite. And I, again, I think it's because their control is starting to slip away a little bit. They're trying to pull it back. They don't want to lose the control they have over the American, American people. Um, then we got this guy, Klaus, uh, Klaus Schwab. Schwab. Yeah. Schwab. Mm-hmm. He's with the uh, World Economic uh, Forum people, whatever the W. Is he related to the guy who paints cars? No, he's related to the guy who takes your money and invests it in stocks. Oh, okay. Charles. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. He wants to immunize the internet? Yeah. So, uh, l- listen to them try to, to, to extrapolate this from immunizations from COVID-19 to, oh, we're going to take care of the internet too. Oh, All right. This guy. Masks are not sufficient. We need vaccines to immunize oh. ourselves. Right. The same is true for cyber attacks. Here too, we have to move from simple protection to immunization. We need to build IT infrastructures that have yeah. digital antibodies built in. <laughs> Inherently to protect themselves. To protect themselves. That's bad. To cough. And it's worse when that in that accent. I'm telling you, yeah. every time and that's true. <laughs> you no, read that's it in a German accent, I'm sorry, that makes it about a hundredfold worse. That's a fair point. But listen to what he's saying is that we need to control the mm. internet to yeah. protect the internet. That sounds oddly familiar. Yeah. Don't go looking around, Benito. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so this there is you go. good, right? Yeah, this is good. They want to control your information. Mm-hmm. They want to control your body. Right. Uh, they 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 mm. obviously already are controlling your kids in the schools. I don't know. There's like, mm. what's left? What's free still, Pat? Hmm? Lunch. Lunch. There, free, there, free there lunch? are no, no free lunches. No free lunches. No free lunches. Okay. Even that's been taken from us. Yeah. Doggone it. Now there is men come. Oh yeah. So you could technically call that a free lunch, but somebody's paying Except for it. Except we're paying for that. Exactly. Yeah. So. So I got nothing. Yeah. Again, the the government doesn't have like a little bake sale going on on the side where they're selling baked goods and mm-hmm. making trillions of dollars a year. Well, I, why, on would, that? why would you need a bake sale if you can just print your own money? Right, and that's what they do. And then, of course, they take uh, a huge percentage of, of everything we make and make that their own. So, And really believe that that's theirs. And they believe that any future taxes that they want to uh, enact, those are theirs as well. well and so if... If they allow you to keep more money while you're robbing from from them, so I seriously. guess the only way to avoid taxes is debt. No, wait, no, that doesn't work either, does it? Because then they can still yeah. tax you after you're dead and gone. That's right, and they do, and they do, and they they do. Did you see that the the uh, Congressional Budget Office is projecting a Three trillion dollar deficit this year. Three trillion dollar deficit. That is the deficit. The budget itself wasn't one trillion not that long ago. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> How do you survive a three trillion dollar a year debt accruing year after year after? Because they're not going to stop. And here's the problem nobody cares about it. Nope. Nobody's talking about that. That should be being trumpeted on Fox News, at least. Every break, they should be declaring, wow, we've got an out-of-control government. Somebody needs to take the reins of this thing and slow them down. 888 No, it isn't. It's 888 <laughs> Thanks for returning with us. 888 3393, <clears throat> also a pat unleashed on Twitter. Uh, you know, here we are with the budget situation we have. You know, when was the last time you heard anybody talk about a budget, in fact? Hey, how about we pass a budget? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Pre- not only has that not happened in, I don't know, over a decade, yeah, probably? Yeah, pre- pre-Obama. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, almost two decades going mm-hmm. on now? But nobody even mentions it anymore. And nobody's talking about a balanced budget. What would that be like? So here we are with the CBO projecting a $3 trillion debt. And we have AOC talking about oh. handing out checks. And not just to American citizens, of course. These centers are also offering help to undocumented folks with oh. eligible children. Oh, good. So any child with a mm. social security number is right. eligible. Right. Do okay. not count yourself out because of, uh, if a parent and guardian is undocumented. Yeah, because you you're just illegal. Need your individual Don't worry taxpayer about that. identification number oh, that's or your all. ITIN. Or your blockbuster video card. Whatever you have, you know, laying around. Maybe you had a library card. <laughs> Maybe it's. It's a Kroger card, you know, to get discounts on groceries. Just bring that with you. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, And we'll just continue to give checks (laughs) to illegal aliens as well. They don't care. Because we've got so much money to spend. We're only $3 trillion in debt this year. (laughs) Don't worry about it. Uh, We got money to burn. And we're burning. (laughs) Oh, yeah, we are. Okay. Tyler in Missouri. You're on the blaze. Hi. Hey, hey. take my call. Um, so I was hearing about the military wanting to start pushing the uh, COVID vaccine and making it mandatory for soldiers. Mm-hmm. I would advise any military person listening who has questions about this policy, look up a court case called Doe versus Rumsfeld. That is where the uh, district court in Washington, D.C., the federal court, said that, uh, no, the Department of Defense cannot force soldiers to get experimental vaccines. Hmm. 
in that case, it was the anthrax vaccine, which I had the full, which I had the full series of, plus a booster before this ruling was made. Wow. And I don't know what long-term neurologic side effects I have as a result of that vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, same thing goes for the long-term effects of the COVID vaccines. Are you experiencing any uh, problems since getting the anthrax vaccine? I possibly have narcolepsy, which is, that's always fun. Yeah, that's fun. That's where you fall and asleep I, at the drop of a hat. Could be anywhere, yeah, uh, right? Right. And yeah. I have a friend, she was medically retired from the Army in 2013 as a result of narcolepsy and the anthrax vaccine. So... Jeez. And and Tyler, that's the only thing that's keeping this mandate from being a part of military requirements, correct? Is the FDA approval because of this court case, right? That I don't know for sure because yeah. I don't know how exactly they're going to try to work around that or if they're just going to completely ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. But well, our federal government would never ignore the court at anything, <laughs> ever. <laughs> right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tyler, thanks a lot, and thank you for your service. Yeah. I appreciate it. Lori D. in New Mexico. Hi, you're on the blaze. Oh, my goodness. Pat, are you okay? I'm worried about your cognitive decline because which phone number are you telling us to call today? Yeah, I don't. Both of them. You can can call them both. Glenn's not even in there yet, but just call it. Yeah. Get in line first. In fact, fact, Lori, uh, Martin's Martin's here in the other room. Martin's going to go down there to the other uh, phone right now and wait your call if you want to go ahead and get a head start on everybody else for Glenn. Yeah. At Jedi Master Martin, I totally got this. So, no, I'm I'm seriously worried about you, Pat. I'm so worried about you. Yeah. I I just. I care. Me too. I care. Uh, I appreciate that. That Thanks, Lori. Appreciate it. Doesn't sound sincere. No, it didn't. It didn't. It really didn't. So you know when you're doing two shows, yeah, every day, every day, and giving out those phone numbers, yeah, every once in a while you're gonna mix them up between the shows. You need a vacation. I'm prescribing a vacation for you. Ow, ow. Okay, yeah, I'll go next week. Oh, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three is this number. <clears throat> uh, Julie in Utah, you're on the blaze. Hi, Pat. Hi. I watch your show every morning. Me and my husband. Thank I'm you for doing Utah. that. That's fantastic. You're welcome. I love your conversation, you and your friend there. My friend there? Yeah. The other guy. Uh-huh. The other guy. Kevin. Yeah. What's his name? I forgot his name. Kevin. I did, I'm too. Kevin. I can't remember. Oh, Kevin. It's nice to meet his you. His Kevin. Hi, uh, Julie. <laughs> Hi. My sister-in-law lives right down the street from you guys. Oh, really? In yep. uh, where? Where does she live? Somewhere in the DFW area? Metroplex? Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. Yeah. My okay. Oh, that's One right those, down the street from yeah, there. Yeah, right down the street. Right, yeah, Dallas-Fort Worth. That's the oh. that's the town you live in. Thanks, Julie. Well, we'll be sure to say hi to her when we see her at 7-Eleven, bump into her somewhere, even though we don't even know her Well, name. I mean, you're you're the neighborhood gadfly, so mm. you just pick a, a, a business exactly. to hang out in and just exactly. have conversations with and people. And just go and talk to right. people, just talk and talk Because it's not talk. like you do that for a living. Right. Whereas when, when the mic shuts <laughs> off at 8 o'clock, especially First if thing I want to do is talk some more. Right, because you're, you're, mm-hmm. you don't have double duty down the hall here right. with Glenn's show. And you're like, ah, what can right. I do? I'm going to go down to the 7-Eleven and hang out and be the gadfly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Just, that's, that's me. Gadfly Pat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think people just get fatigued from the amount of conversation. I I just uh, mm. uh, bombard them with. Yeah, I would say it's a bombardment. Yeah, really. and it's it can't be unique to us. Like in your job, talking to you, the viewer, the listener, do you when when you get clocked out, do you want to go home and talk about your profession or your job? You know, like I don't want to talk politics when I get done here. Uh no. I, mean, I, I can't imagine people do, right? Sometimes I get, you know, motivated by something in the news to tweet out a link <sighs> and, and bitch and moan about something like that. Yeah. But I mean, that was the whole premise behind my podcast is like I needed a place to not talk politics. Yeah. So that's why I created at the mic. But I can't imagine that anybody like if you build cars for a living, <clears> you want to go home and talk, talk about, about building cars. Building cars. Or build more cars. Or build at more home <laughs> as actually, a hobby. Actually, that was probably a bad example yeah. because <laughs> a lot of people do that. Uh, all right, we've got Hillary Kennedy coming up in a minute. Yep. If there's one thing you probably know about her, uh, it's that she's a UFC fan, and she loves violent bloodbaths. 
in the ring. <laughs> and we, we didn't get that over the weekend. No. Uh, that was over before it started. Uh, we didn't, although it was grisly. Have you, have you seen yes, the I have. video? Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Ugh. Connor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. Poirier, yeah. Uh, duked it out, and uh, Poye won, kind of. Well, we'll get into that with <laughs> Hillary coming up next on Pat Gray Unleashed. And we are happy to have joining us Hillary Kennedy from the 4-Minute Buzz, also a an ardent uh, UFC fan, Love the blood and guts of the UFC. Yes, thank you for having me back on. Uh, it's mm-hmm. great to have you. You also went on vacation last week. Mm-hmm. want to get into that a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's great to have you back. Anyway... Uh, UFC 264, right? Yes. Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. Dustin the Diamond Poirier, yes. Mm. This was the fight I was looking forward to the most all year because I'm a huge Conor McGregor fan. Mm -hmm. I will say this. I felt in my heart like Poirier might win simply because he has a ton of motivation. He still feels like he has something to prove. He's still working his way up. Conor's already been at the top for Mm -hmm. a while. And he doesn't. He wants the win. He doesn't need the win. Mm. Poirier needs the win, and so I, that alone, I felt like maybe would give him the drive to defeat Connor. Mm. Although I was hoping Connor would, you know, pull something out and win because I just love watching him win. Yeah. Um, but the fight was actually a pretty big disappointment, I think, yeah. by most accounts. Well, uh, for those who don't know, Connor McGregor uh, stepped weirdly, I guess, on his leg and broke it. Ugh. Just nasty. from stepping back now. There's speculation that uh, when he tried to kick Poye earlier, mm-hmm. Poye blocked him with his elbow, and maybe that cracked it to begin with. Yes, they think that's what it was that he that he checked Connor's kick, and that's when it broke. Um, this was at the end of the first round, so I mean, I think most of us were hoping it would at least go to the second round, but Poye yeah. did well, win by con- TKO. I mean, they stopped it. Couldn't get up. The yeah, you you pr- were probably watching on pay per view. Yeah, well, <laughs> we were streaming. I was on vacation, so <laughs> oh. trying to watch. The fight from a Holiday Inn in Albuquerque is not as easy <laughs> as you would think that it is. With a two and a half year old, they what? were also trying to get to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I didn't get to watch it with the critical eye that I would like to have had. But um, but yeah, it it was weird because they they stopped the fight. Connor was on the ground still yelling about it. He wanted I to keep going. When you see the footage, if you watch the fight, you can oh, see the break. I mean, disturbing. it is brutal it's to watch. Disturbing because so, his leg literally breaks in half almost and it's headed the wrong direction Mm -hmm. yes it's gruesome well in the last time that they fought back in february when connor lost he was pretty gracious about it by connor standards (sighs) this time he's he's in the octagon on the ground clearly in pain and still hurling insults yeah at Poirier, at Poirier and Poirier's wife, yes. Joey. Your wife's in my DMs. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This it's so classless. Yeah, he called her a not, not cool. very nice name as well. So on the way oh, out, man. Poirier's wife flipped the bird at Connor and just You're kept going. Literally being carried out on a stretcher, yelling at the guy who, by all intents and purposes, just kicked your butt. Right. I mean, stop. Yeah. Stop but it. I will say Connor did look really good up until <laughs> okay. the break. So I think if that <laughs> right. accident he was hadn't the fight? happened, honestly, no. The judges still <laughs> had Poirier as being the winner of the first round, but not wow. by much. So I think hmm. had they gone to a second round, it could have been anybody's match, I really do believe. But yeah, the freak accident kind of killed How it. How long is he so, in that boot? When's he coming back? Uh, six months, oh. I believe, is how long I think it's going to take before he's really back to fighting shape. Wow. I don't know. So six weeks on crutches, but they're saying like six months at least before he's really, truly able to, to fight again. But because he's hurling insults at him, as he's no doubt in excruciating pain yes. on, on the canvas, uh, that kind of gives you an indication of why Poye called him a dirtbag or whatever it was he called him in the uh, post-fight interview. Yeah, there's no love lost between these two. How'd and, that start? And Well, with, with you them. know, Connor's just a trash talker by nature. Poirier's really not that guy. In fact, he even said in the, the press conference afterwards, he said, I actually hate all this stuff. Mm-hmm. He said, the only reason that I fight is because I'm good at it, and I can mm. make money doing it, and I can help people through my foundation because he's really involved with his charitable foundation, The Good Fight. And he said, other than that, I hate all this. So he said, mm. I stayed off of social media for months before the fight. I didn't want to hear any of the noise. I didn't want to hear anything Connor had to say. And Connor was 
fairly silent on social media while he was training, but he just loves to trash talk. And Dana White even said, man, you, you, you know, you're going too far. You're crossing the line. But Connor said, you need fighters like me. Yeah. You know, it brings eyeballs. It gets people upset. It gets them excited. It's true. So it's very true. It's it's classless. Yes. Is it entertaining? Yes. yes. Are you going to watch <laughs> really the is. next one? Yes. Absolutely. Well, and Poirier mm-hmm. even said, listen, our next fight might not even be in the octagon. It may be on the street. Because mm-hmm. he said the guy said he wanted he connor said i i want to murder you i'm coming for you Ugh. and poirier said you know not you cool. can say what you want to about my wife because our relationship's solid i'm not worried about that but threatening my life that's where i draw the line and i'll take it outside if we need to so when you're better let me know and i'll knock you out no matter what so <laughs> what a mess. Good wow stuff. well connor is 32 i believe right yes mm-hmm. so i mean he's still He's still young enough. He could make a decent comeback. And he wants to fight him again, right? He wants to he fight does. him for a fourth time. He called this an illegitimate win. Yeah. How many times has he retired? Uh, five it's or six, maybe. It's a lot. <laughs> Quite a bit, yeah. yeah it's and a Khabib lot. Nurmagomedov even said, like, you are finished, Connor. You need to hang it up. You should have retired, you know, three or four times ago. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just don't think his ego will let him retire yet. He's got to have one more win because he's had so many losses in a row now that I, I think. Oh, it's, yeah. Is it four in a row? It's it's three or four. Yeah. Maybe three. I'm trying to remember. But ah, I mean, the UFC doesn't really have a star like him that's no, on they, the rise no, yet. They don't. And and again, Poirier's a lot like Stipe uh Miocek. He he's there for the fight. He's not there for the show. He yeah. really is in it for the fight and the money and that and wants to go home. Connor is there to fight, but he is there for the show. He loves being a celebrity, he loves being a star, and they need some other they need some fresh blood like that. They do. I, I don't know who that would be because, like you said, nobody seems to. Jeffy. Jeffy. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffy, Jeffy. get in the ring, hey, do some damage. Jeffy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the we'll athletically overweight Jeffy. Yeah, take him two uh, weeks to get in fighting shape. <laughs> <laughs> Three tops. Four maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Years. Year. Decades. Something like that. It's not happening. So, how was your vacation? Uh, I wouldn't really classify it as a vacation as much as it was. <laughs> we left town and I didn't work. But I can understand why people... I have a lot of friends that don't travel with their toddlers, and I couldn't yeah. understand why until no. now. <laughs> until now. <laughs> Traveling with a two-and-a-half-year-old, not as fun as you would imagine. Uh-huh. I, yeah. I thought, you know, in my mind, I was like, we'll be making all these warm, fuzzy family memories, but... It was yeah. really more just a string of tantrums and, yeah, and no say, sleep at night. <laughs> You're making memories, just not warm, right. fuzzy yeah. ones. Just not yeah. good yeah. memories. Exactly. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, Although eventually you'll look back on it as a good memory, I bet. Because when he's, you know, 17 and graduating from high school, then you'll think back. Then I'll miss oh, it. Oh, remember those days when we thought it was obnoxious and now I'd have I'd do anything to have that back. Uh, so anyway, welcome back for your mm. vacation. Where, where you. did you go? Did you go to Colorado? We went to Colorado. We go to a little tiny town called Creed, Colorado. It's in southwestern mm. Colorado. So the closest kind of big town would be Durango or Gunnison, if you've heard of those. <laughs> the next big, big town, yeah, Durango. Yeah, so they don't have a stoplight. Um, mm. It truly is wow. you know, getting away from everything, which yeah. is wonderful. But if you're getting away from everything, that's also getting away from anything that's fun for a toddler. Because mm. they don't hike. They don't fly fish. They don't rock How climb. How old is he now? Two and a half. So, also learned that the hard way. I see why people go to Disney yet? World. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see why people do things yeah. like Disney World, water parks, theme parks, keep them entertained because middle of nowhere, Colorado, there wasn't that much you could do yet. So, but there's a Holiday Inn in Albuquerque. But the Holiday, here. yeah, <laughs> that's a happening <laughs> that's, spot. That's a good spot. So, when's the next big UFC event? Is that's, there one lined up? That's a really good question. I they talked about that after the fight, which I didn't get to see because which my UFC son this be woke on? up about four times. Oh after the no! Fight. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. Look that up. It was two sixty five. Is that what it would be? Saturday, mm-hmm. August seventh. Okay. And is there the headliner? Who's who's Lewis versus Gain? Does that mean no, anything to you? Doesn't mean you know, anything. They to have me. a big one like Mm-mm. this, and then the next one or two is usually people that are, you know, relatively you not unknown. unknown. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay, so and then the women's side is uh, Nunez versus Pena. Now, Nunez, that will be a great yeah, fight. There's, there's your uh, poster Nunez is for. Scary. Okay, she's in the. Is she the one in the Modelo commercials too? She is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah she so is she's a scary <laughs> chick. I wouldn't want to fight her. A lot of those UFC women are scary chicks. They, they are. They're, I, <laughs> I mean, those fights the are the best. Them. Watching women come to blows and bloods flying and teeth no. are flying. No. That, <laughs> no. 
That is entertaining. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm no. You don't like I'm to watch not giving you women this. scrap. Hell no. no. What? No, under no circumstances, whether it's on pay per view or in Walmart checkout lanes, I don't want to see women I think fighting. It's a lot more exciting to watch the women fight because uh, it's there's something in us where it just seems no. unexpected. Yeah. You know, we're used to seeing men fight in real life and on TV, but seeing two women just really go for it, I think that's amazing. <laughs> it's our sexism coming through, but yeah. mm, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure we no. share that. All right, Hillary, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll be watching yeah. for you on the four minute thanks boss. For thanks for coming on. in. <laughs> um, you know, Built Bar is uh, fabulous. Mm-hmm. These love, are healthy for you. These make these get through my day. Because they, of these. they help you get through the day. Yes. They uh, they are high in protein and fiber, and they're low in calories and carbs. And so you don't have to feel guilty when you eat these. Uh, now, if you eat like seven or eight of them during the day, <laughs> maybe that's a different deal. But um, they are fantastic, and it's hard not to eat seven or eight of them because <laughs> I, they're I'm delicious. I'm telling you, case in point, just yesterday I had a 2.30 lunch. Okay, I eat breakfast at like 4, 5 a.m., okay? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? 10 a.m., I had a built bar, and I was good to go until this 2.30 thing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, and uh, this this week, uh, you can get the grasshopper cookie flavor. It's got 150 oh, 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 oh. calories, 17 grams of protein, 5 grams of sugar, uh, but who cares about that? What does it taste like? <laughs> it tastes absolutely right. delicious. It's like a classic Thin Mint cookie. Mm-hmm. Um, all the flavor without the sugar. Now, if you're a living, breathing human being, that probably gets you about as excited as it gets me. But Built Bars are so incredibly delicious that it amazes me they're, they're still healthy for you. And you don't have to feel guilty about eating them. Go to Built.com, use the promo code PAT15, and save 15% off your first order. Promo code PAT15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Pat Gray Unleashed. Hmm. So Texas Democrats have fled the state again in an effort to block (laughs) GOP-backed voting restrictions. This is like every few years, man. (laughs) pathetic it is i remember the first time i know of this happening was clear back i don't know when we worked in houston together yep. Keith, and, mm-hmm. and the democrats left 20 years ago it was because of redistricting uh yes. in that particular instance and now they just do it every time because <laughs> <laughs> they're pathetic in other words they don't have enough votes to win with legislation right but they do have enough votes to prevent a quorum from occurring so here's uh here's governor uh, Greg Abbott talking to talking to Laura Ingram last night uh, about this situation. Isn't that the most un-Texan thing you've ever heard? Texans running from a fight? Yeah, they're they're quitters. Uh, they're, it's like uh, during a, a football game or a baseball game, uh, taking their equipment when they're way behind and just <clears throat> leaving the field. That is not the way that Texas Texans do things. And you captured it perfectly. And that is, uh, they're they're leaving and abandoning their right to vote. And I tell you what is crazy, but Laura, this is not over uh, because uh, you, as was pointed out in that uh, prelude, uh, we have special sessions that last 30 days and the governor calls them and I will continue calling special session after special session Mm. because overtime is going to continue until they step up to vote. Mm. How about that? Wow. It's going to keep going. Good for him. Yeah. It's going to keep their feet to the fire and he should and he should. This voter suppression thing is yeah. such bull crap. And yeah, especially when 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 you consider, as he pointed out, that you know Texas, we can vote up to twelve days ahead of the election, right? And they're going to expand the hours that we can vote, and they're going to expand the hours on election day. And he compared it with the president's <laughs> home state of Delaware. Where there's zero early voting whatsoever. Why aren't people protesting there? Because it's all politics. It has nothing to do with suppression or anything like that. He said they're going to get arrested if they come back to Texas and drag back to the Capitol. I love it. Good. (laughs) Good. Uh, There's 58 of them. And uh, they all bolted in this effort to block the measure from advancing. Uh, Went to D.C. How appropriate. Going to D.C. on two (laughs) private jets chartered for the occasion... And they're going to use the time there to rally support for federal voting legislation. 
Uh, I, I don't have the photos pulled here, but they were showing the pictures on those uh, private jets, that, you know, that are, of course, uh, harming our environment. Mm -hmm. um, but I noticed that none of the pictures, none of the selfies that they were taking on the flights, were they wearing masks? Huh. On the flights? On the flights. Yeah, you know, that's Isn't federally that mandated. Right. Yeah, like, uh, right. And, and here's, uh, okay, hmm. so here's, some of them were on a bus. So here's, so here's the Democrats on the bus. I don't see any masks. I realize the Not clear. a one. Okay. So that's the bus. Let's see. Where's the flight here? But uh, isn't that interesting? Sure is. It's. I mean, we shouldn't be surprised. That's all they do is make rules for you, but not for them. And the whole suppression thing is outrageous. Jen Psaki was babbling about it. There they are on the airplane. Hi. No masks in sight. Not, not one, right? Yep. Not a one. Not, not, not a one. One. Not a one. Well, we're vaccinated. Well, yeah, then fine. Then, then why don't you fly to D.C. instead of worrying about these bogus claims about voter suppression and tell them to lift the stupid FAA mandate? So here's uh, Jen Psaki trying to do this uh, voter suppression bullcrap as well. <laughs> Uh, because he's very focused on this speech tomorrow, one that he himself mm. wanted to deliver. Um, he'll lay out the moral case for why denying the right to vote is a form of suppression <laughs> and a form of silencing. Denying, denying the right to vote. he will use, he will redouble his commitment to using every tool at his disposal Against. to continue to fight to protect the fundamental <laughs> right of Americans to vote against the onslaught of voter suppression onslaught. laws based on a dangerous and discredited conspiracy theory that culminated in assault on our capital. He'll call out the greatest irony of the big lie is that no election in our history has met such a high standard, with over 80 judges, including those appointed by his predecessor, throwing out all challenges. He'll also decry efforts to strip the right to vote as authoritarian and anti-American. Nobody's uh, trying to a, strip the right uh, to vote! stand up against the notion that God. politicians ah. should be allowed to choose their voters <laughs> or to subvert our system by replacing independent election authorities authorities with partisan ones. And he will uh, highlight the work of the administration against this, the necessity of passing the For the People Act and the John Lewis ah! Voting Rights Advancement Act, and how we need to work together with civil rights organizations to build as broad a turnout and voter education system to overcome the worst challenge to our democracy since the Civil War. Oh! <laughs> My God! I wasn't sure what was going to trigger you at the end more, democracy or civil war comparisons. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Equally. Wow. Uh, that There is so much uh -huh. garbage there. Uh -huh. So many lies. <laughs> the biggest threat to our democracy, which we don't have a democracy, since the Civil War, <laughs> offering more hours to vote, <laughs> more days in which you can vote, and... Uh, just seeing to it that you it's as easy as it's ever been to vote in this state. Yeah, show us your ID. Oh, my gosh. Suppression. Oh, God, that's just, uh, just incredible. I can't. <sighs> How does this not get uh, slapped down by more Republicans? How are they not in front of more cameras yelling and screaming about what this incredible lie the incredible lie about the big lie and everything else that has followed since such unbelievable garbage coming out of this administration. I will never defend Republicans or the Republican Party, but could it be a case of just the system is overwhelmed and there's just so much? Where, where do you focus your fire? You're, you're, I don't know, but you've got to, you've got to stand up, yeah, it's just, and correct this garbage because this is this is the root one right here. I mean, wow, it is. The, if the vote isn't sacred, then forget any other thing. Uh, these are such incredible liars. Seriously, the the Nazi Party had nothing on these people as far as being able to lie mm. and pushing the big lie so that. You know, so many times and just repeating the same thing over and over and over and over. Tell people just believe it. Yeah. Tell people believe, oh my gosh, Republicans are taking away people's rights. Nothing could be further from the truth, especially in Texas. I mean, the Georgia law is the same way. Mm -hmm. There's more opportunity to vote. More, not less. Yeah, it's just it's, unbelievable. It's truly maddening. They add Sunday voting. But take away one hour from the rest of early voting because it's Sunday. Uh, and that is <laughs> voter suppression. Yeah.
I did. And, and, and you remember that argument that we were hung up on with the Georgia mm. law, and we're like, why do they cut off voting earlier on election day? Yeah. Well, that's because there's time for you to get to your polling place. Right. Uh, they, 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 they made it so that you had to be at your polling place on election day in Georgia if it was um, at a certain time of day. Remember that? And we were mm-hmm. like, why are, they, why are they cutting those hours short? Well, they're just saying you can't go to you know, a place across the other side of the state because they're going to need to count your vote at the end of the night. <laughs> ah, I, it, it's, it's so frustrating. Yeah, yeah and There's just not words to express my frustration over this. And you're like, hey, uh, look at how they repeat this lie until it sticks. Absolutely. I mean, and they are the, 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 the biggest uh, example of that is 1-6. One, 1-6, six. One, six, one, six. oh my gosh, it was the biggest oh, threat yeah. since the Civil War. Oh, in our republic's history. Oh, of course they wouldn't say republic. Our nation's history, our democracy's history. 1-6, one, 1-6, six, one, six, one, six. And so all you hear about every day, day in, day out, is 1-6, one, six, one, six. And the next time that comes up in conversation around the dinner table or Thanksgiving or something like that, you're like, well, yeah, boy, that was a big deal, huh? And you have no clue, but you just know you've had it hammered in for the last year. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a nap now. Uh, they've really gone to hyperbole. They and I think they're so doing well. it because uh, it, it works on so many people. Low information voters. Who- when they can tell you that 1-6 mm-hmm. was the biggest deal since the Civil War, and then they turn around and tell you that uh, the Texas voting law is the biggest threat to our democracy since the Civil War... Good grief. I, mean, I can't. People, I think people who are really uninformed and just kind of pay half attention to this yeah, stuff. exactly. They just go, well, wow. They, I yeah. didn't know it was that bad. I've heard a lot of this. Wow, six dang. Must be bigger than I they're, remember. They're saying it's really bad, so <laughs> uh, it must be really bad. <laughs> it's fun, uh, right? No. No, it's really not. Yeah, so... Uh, I'm not having fun with this. It, you're going to have to go to the 7-Eleven today and hang out at the cash register and, and just talk, talk to, to people, people about this because yeah. I know you enjoy doing it I so do. much. I really do. <laughs> and there's there's a Sev right across the street from us, and so I'll be there. You'll be at the 7-Eleven right yeah. here in Irving? Look for me at the 7-Eleven in Irving talking to the uh, cashier about the Georgia and Texas voting laws. While you're there, can you get some of the going rotten fruit in the basket they keep at the cash <laughs> register there? Sure. Hey, we we'll give you three, yeah. four dollar. All oh, right. I don't want that, no, because yeah. it's got a bruise and it's gross <laughs> and the banana's all like brown. Get out. Right. So, yeah. But I'll get one for you. Thank you. And bring it back. Aw. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I don't know what to do. It's I, frustrating. I don't know how to. I, I don't know why Republicans can never do a better job of defending things like this that are so easily defended. Mm-hmm. You're not out there telling people, look, there's more hours, there's more days, there's more time, there's just more opportunity to vote and in Texas. You remember how frustrating it was during the 2000 uh, primaries or, or the election where they're like, well, why won't George Bush speak out about the Confederate flag flying at the state grounds in Charleston or in Columbia, South Carolina? Mm-hmm. Well, why aren't you bugging Al Gore about his dad's votes against civil rights, man? Yeah, they, and that's no. what this is. Why aren't you bugging Joe Biden about his home state of Delaware where you can't vote early at all? <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a great argument. And sadly, nobody's making it. Nobody in Congress, nobody with any power. Uh, it's it's incomprehensible. It really is. All right. It's been another fun day, and we will see you tomorrow <laughs> for even more fun. And Jeffy will join us for it. Here on Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray, only on the Blaze Radio Network.